So, this is going on YouTube? Yeah, okay, this is going on YouTube because people keep asking me for a tank video. What's up, YouTube? My name is Sid, or no Sid in for the long form, but you can just call me Sid. A lot of people have asked me to make a YouTube video about what I think about tanking. This is going to be edited down a little bit because I'm doing this live on Twitch. Uh, but, so, well, it's raw, so I'm going to do what I can. Let me just pull up all my information a little bit right here. One of the first things I want to talk about is how new world like what makes new world tanking different than other tanking one of the main things is first off you're gonna have to buy a carnelian gem carnelian gems are necessary they're red gems i can actually show you real quick i have them in both of my weapons uh they're these red gems that cause uh that activate taunts and they also make you generate 300 percent more threat a lot of people just always talk about the taunt part the 300 percent more threat is also very important this is they are pristines this is the top notch top of the line gem so if you're a lower level and you want to tank lower level dungeons there are lower uh threat generating taunt activating uh carnelian gems for you so make sure to get that if you're going to tank and especially in your sword for your sword and shield abilities that's the first thing you also need to know when to block my thing is you usually want to block light attacks you're going to have to learn the animations and what's going on there are going to be times as a tank that you're still going to be using uh dodges and dashes right and so i'm going to put a few of those on the screen one of them i just did recently actually was genesis uh we did it pretty damn quick but uh there is a moment that you need to dash because if you don't dash dodge you're going to get uh, broken, so stamina broken. So you just you need to do it. Another thing that's really important when you're tanking is you're going to get pushed around by bosses a lot, and so because of that, tanks are really expected to know how to guide the boss into positions that they need. Expect to be a leader as a tank. You're the one that's going to tell people what you're doing next, or unless someone's watching you, telling you what to do. But usually tanks are the leaders because they're in control of the boss and they from the front of the boss can see everyone behind it, right? If everyone's doing their job. Make sure you po position the boss towards you and away from all of your, your teammates. That's what you want. One thing I will say for armor, like uh, what type of armor do you use? I would do heavy. I would do heavy armor. If you're going to tank PvE content, I would do heavy armor. If you're going to tank PvP content... I'm gonna get into that, but if you're gonna take PvP content, you're gonna probably want heavy armor too. So I would just heavy armor it up. As you can see, I'm, I'm pretty much maxed out. I'm full void bent and uh, shield on. I'm in whole, all heavy armor, and that's just what I do to absorb damage. Attributes. So my attributes are a little interesting. So while I was leveling, I dumped into constitution and had a little bit of strength. I never went way over 300 constitution, uh, but because my gear was constantly changing and because I was doing this when prices to respect were really, really high, I just didn't deal with it. But now that they're a little cheaper, I've messed around. A lot of people will tell you, just do 200 constitution. Why? Because 200 constitution gets you that 20% increased armor. Uh, bubble and that's the good thing right that's that's what you need and you also have the increasing your max health by your physical armor well that's nice and all but these other ones do come in handy like the 60 percent damage reduction when you take your first hit have you ever been hit by a, a bow right in the head when you weren't expecting it and it critting and for them they're just kind of questioned why you only took a thousand damage when really they should have done like ten thousand yeah it's really nice it's really nice. And then this one I really, really enjoy also when I'm fighting. 20% duration on stun slow and root spells. Are you kidding me? That's just adding time to your stuns and everything. But you could say things aren't going to stay stunned. Because if you do damage to a stun target, it's going to drop the stun. But this is really nice when you need to stun a target and run away, right? Or stun a target and move to another one to make sure that it has threat on you for a long time or anything like that. It's still really good. So why do I have 246 constitution? Sadly, whenever you put your sword and shield away, you lose the shield stats. In reality, I have 
260 constitution with my sword and shield out. Why 260? When I eat 40 con food during times that I need more tankiness, that 40 con food puts me at that 200 mark with my sword and shield out. And then the strength, I always have it when I need it. You can mess around with this. I just want to say, if you've gotten this far into the video, if whatever build you go with is viable as long as you enjoy it and can clear content. I've been clearing content with this build. It's a nice sit back build, so I enjoy it. I go for 260 constitution. I'd bump that up to 300 with 40 con food when I'm doing things like expeditions, arenas, PvP. But if I'm just out in the world, I don't need the 300 constitution, even for the one shot of trees. I, I really just don't need it. So strength is where all my other points go. Perks. Some perks I like. Some perks I really like and I have not been able to get away from. Um, as a tank, a lot of people will tell you that Void Bent Armor is not BIS. Yes, this is true. I'm not a min-maxer. I'm not here to tell you this is the best gear that you can get ever and this is the only thing you'll ever need for the next five months. No, I'm not telling you that. I like Void Bent. It has more magic armor than physical armor. That's why you get a little less benefit and there's luck on it rather than something else you may enjoy. You know, so people say you're not getting the best benefit. I think it's still really good for tanks, and you can have this on for PvE and PvP and clear content. Do it all the time. Really, really fun. Uh, the, the good thing is resilient for PvP. You take less crit damage. Invigorated. Uh, all those debuffs on you for both PvP and PvE. If you remember Dynasty, if you ever tank Dynasty, or if you're not level 60 yet and you're about to tank Dynasty, prepare to be surprised because there are debuffs up the ass. They're annoying. For sword and shield and hammer, one of them for sword and shield, I, I really like accelerated defiant stance. Those are really nice, but the only ones necessary for tanking, I would say, is Sturdy and Hated. Sturdy and Hated just make tanking easier. It, it, it just makes everything so much better because you're going to need that extra threat. The, the Pristine Gem, the Carnelian, is not enough on its own. You're going to need things to generate more threat, but you don't need threat in PvP. You think so, but there are brutes and, and adds and things like that in OPR, and you don't know what they're going to add for the future. And really, you're not losing out on that much damage with a different gem or different perk or anything like that. So I really like putting Sturdy and Hated on my Sword and Shield. For the hammer, you have quite a few options. I'm not going to tell you a hammer build. I personally enjoy Sundering Shockwave. It gives me a rend. I have a lot of weakness uh, in abilities in my kit. So rend on the hammer does a lot of benefit as well. Let's go into weapon mastery. For weapon mastery, this is the sword and shield build I go with personally. This is the one that has gotten me through all the content. Um, I haven't changed it since I've been leveling. There are things I'm noticing I can do. I've experimented a little bit to try different things. Like, uh, what about this invigorating bulwark? Would I be willing to give up a little bit of damage and threat on shield bash to get a little bit more defenses whenever I hit shield bash or anything like that? These are all viable options. But for me personally, this was the build that worked well for me. Why? Well, the thing that I was going for was beefy and also a little bit of regen. Something that I can sit behind my shield till I get the regeneration from Defiant Stance again. So these perks right here, people tend to try to get rid of them in some way. Like they try to... People try to drop one of these. Reduce magic damage by 10%. Getting uh, Fortify on a block. Stamina damage from a ranged attack. I've seen a few people drop this one, they, they, the stamina damage, but I want all of them. These are all things that the, the physical armor with your constitution will give you more health, right? I want all of them. I couldn't not take one, so I did. Why do I take uh, these three abilities? Well, Shield Bash is really good because it has a taunt. 
Shield Rush is really good because it has a 10 second, 10% weaken on all enemies five meters from the target you hit. This, a lot of people I think slept on this. This does a lot of work in PvP and PvE. Yeah, you're not doing the most damage, but you're reducing a lot of damage, not just to you, but everyone around you. So I really like the weaken on Approved Rush. They buffed it. It used to be only a weaken for four seconds. Now it's 10 seconds. I really, really like it. Defiant Stance. I. This is one of the big things in PvP that people hate me for. Why do I regen so much health? I hit Defiant Stance, and if I sit behind my shield, this paired with Recuperation, all incoming healing and regeneration is increased by 10%. Heals me a ge really generous amount of health, being that I have a lot of max health as a tank. So this is why I went with it. Uh, defensive Formation, a lot of people love this. This is one of the main reasons people still take you in PvP and PvE invasions and things like that over damage. Because you can give everyone around you a 30% damage reduction. So make sure to use that. That comes in handy. Remember that when you have your shield up with this build, that you reduce the damage your friends take around you. This left side of the tree, people get a little bit more free. You can, you can decide. Again, your build is any that works for you. I personally like Empowered Stab, Freeing Justice, Counter Attack, and Mobility. Some people don't go with Mobility. Why don't they go with Mobility? They don't think it's necessary. But in PvP and PvE, I think it does a lot of wonders. I can't explain much of why because it's something that I notice as I play. But when I can back up faster than people can charge a Great Axe Heavy and I don't get by their heavy charges and they're just sitting there like sitting ducks trying to hit me, but they're just... So they go into light attacks, but then they can't get through my shield. Mobility is kind of funny. But if you didn't want mobility, Achilles Heal is another great one because it applies a slow to the final attack chain of your light attacks, which is your little spinny move. That paired with final blow which increases the damage of your little spinny move that, that that's a good pairing so this is my build that i use with sword and shield personally it's got regen it's got mitigation a lot of mitigation it's got ways to stun two taunts and with counter attack i still have an impact with counter attack and empowered stab i have two ways to increase my damage with Freeing Justice, I have a way to get rid of debuffs on top of, if you remember, my armor was a way to get rid of debuffs faster. So I'm just throwing those off of me as fast as possible, right? The next one is, what do I use as a weapon? A lot of people will tell you Hatchet. I don't like Hatchet. I don't like it. I don't like the situations that it comes in. I've tried everything and anything that I could do with it. It's not the tanking play style for me. I don't like it. Why do people like it? It's because Berserk is an AoE taunt that you can use. And this AoE taunt is 8 seconds at 8 meters. That's really good. It also heals you for a percentage of your health. Again, it's like Defiant Stance, but better. And you have Defy Death. Here's the problem. I have to take out my hatchet. And when I do, I just feel like... I'm a walking punching bag for mobs. I don't feel like they actually help me. You know, and defy death, I have to know when I'm going to die. Pull out my hatchet. Now I'm not going to be blocking, really, by the way. Resort to my berserk heal and my healer, and they just get a couple of seconds, and then I have a 75-second cooldown on it. I just, I was not getting uses out of it. I don't like hatchet. It is good for tanking, but if you're looking for what I do... I personally like with the Warhammer. This is the build I've been using. I have not changed it much. I would only ever change one perk. One perk out of this whole thing. My goal of this build, why do I use Clear Out? Why do I use Shockwave, Path of Destiny? The whole point of this build is for me to hit you with one CC. One CC. If I can get you with one Shockwave, which... Uh, does apply weaken again this applies weaken i'm mitigating damage if i can hit you with one path of destiny if i can hit you with one clear out by the way this gives fortify to all my allies around me so i take off my shield that gives me 10 percent fortify 
I swing with clear out, I give everyone around me 10% fortify. Just a benefit. This. Whenever a target is affected by a crowd control effect, they are slowed by 20%. Now this doesn't seem like much, right? You hit someone with a stun, oh, they're slowed for a little bit. Oh, who cares, right? In PvP though, this. Paired with this perk right here, exhaustive attacks. All hammer abilities apply exhaust, slowing target stamina regeneration by 20%. Not only am I slowing you, I'm slowing your stamina regen. And with Path of Destiny, that's the first one. If I can land that, I can close the gap. I don't need a charge. I can then shockwave you. I can do it, my heavy attacks that you see here. This is what all buffing up my heavy attacks. And then when I need to, I clear out and pull back out my shield. Then you get a few extra points, right? Why do I do Prevailing Spirit? Well, when you Path of Destiny 15 mobs in a dungeon and you heal for half your health, your healer kind of loves you for it. You know what I mean? So Path of Destiny healing is pretty nice. Concussive Impact. Um, this just pairs off of the other two debuffs, the slow and the stamina exhaustion you're putting on people. This is just making you do more damage to them. If you hit an ability on people, you do more damage. And the last one I go with, Outnumbered. This is more PvE oriented. Why Outnumbered? Because when there's multiple... Well, it's PvP too. When multiple of y'all fuckers try to kill me in PvP and I pull out my hammer and y'all wondering why I don't die in one hit. Well, one, I'm a tank. Why do you think I'm going to die in one hit from you? But two, it's probably because of Outnumbered. If there's more than two of you around me, by two or more people, I take 10% damage reduction. These are the weapons I use for tanks. Sword and shield and the hammer. Oh no! That's okay. I'm almost done though. Our server went down. No! Just a couple more things I would bring up. I want to say for gems, it depends on the, on the gear you're wearing. But you're going to take physical damage more often. Mess with them. I like Onyx. Onyx and Diamonds are my favorite. I like to put Onyx in everything. And a lot of people still use Great Axe, Warhammer, stuff like that. Uh, and if you're, use, if you're like me and you're in Void Bent, you have a lot more magic resist armor in the first place. So you don't need that much magic resist in the first... You, you don't need it. So if you're if you're going for the void bent tank kind of style like me, onyxes are nice. They're really nice. That physical damage makes up for the fact that you have less than the faction armor you could get at level 60 in the first place. For food, I recommend strength, con, strength con, con strength. And if you want to mess with dexterity a little bit, you can do that too. I mean, I sword and shield damage does base off of dexterity as well but i just i have no point for it i have no point i have the warhammer that scales one to one so why would i even worry about it your role in pvp oh this is one that's going to be funny your role in pvp uh you want to know how to pvp as a tank don't okay now you decided to pvp as a tank anyway even though i just warned you Here's some things that you're going to have to know. Bruisers are going to hate you. Magic, uh, people with magic bows and muskets, they're going to hate you even more. You're not going to do nearly as much damage and people are going to think little of you until you can start getting the gear and the stats where you can have around 200 strength. And if you can really kick it with the sword and shield at 200 strength, 300 constitution, people are going to be wondering what the hell happened to their health while they hit you 15 times and you only took a thousand damage. So just understand you're probably going to be low on the leaderboards because AGS does not love us tanks. Uh, when you're defending a point in OPR or something, usually you may be the last person going down. Uh, it's, it's a sad life as a tank. So if you're gonna tank in PVP, I'm really sad for you, but we're pretty good in duels. Uh, the best thing I can say though is just take off the sword and shield and try something else or understand your role. You're not meant to kill people. You're meant to reduce damage for everyone else. And if there's too many of you, you're useless.
sorry not sorry my closing thoughts tanking what you're going for with tanking is you're trying to manage your stamina you're trying to reduce the damage you take when your stamina is down or you don't need it and you want to up your threat one carnelian does not does not work you're not going to get away with one carnelian i'm sorry in pve people wonder how do i keep threat all the time oh i just i just taunt at the right times no no unless you have something that makes your taunts come up every five seconds you're not going to do it you need some damage that's why it says 300 percent on the gem not just taunts are active but you also get 300 percent more threat that's why so that's why sturdy and heated on your gear especially your sword and shield works wonders to reduce the damage you take and to increase the threat you deal um if you're being a tank don't worry about it it's easy take your time i honestly would start out with more constitution than strength if you go up to 350 constitution that's not a big deal the more comfortable you get with stamina management you can start giving up some of your constitution for more strength to help getting bosses down faster that's really all that's you don't it's not hard don't freak out you're going to do great as a tank just breathe and pull up your shield and people will love you that's it thanks for watching the video i hope you have a great rest of your night make sure to like comment subscribe if you need any if you have any questions please uh let me know and also let me know about your tank builds because i want to know what intelligence tanks dex tanks or any other type of tanks that can do because i i know the ice gauntlet could do something kind of cool with against all melee when you think just an idea let me know. Have a great one, guys. May the spark guide you.